Hi, everybody. I'm Amy Kilmaker, Instructional Development Specialist with Learning and Organizational Development Unit at Ohio State University Extension. Hi, I'm Jared Morrison, an Organization Development Consultant with the same unit with Ohio State University Extension. And we are here today to talk about engaged teaching, creating an experience. And so today, um, as we get into this creating an experience, I want you to think about how you best learn or how your best friend or closest colleague best learns. How do they pick up something new? Uh, how do some of your top learners interact with you and with content that you reach out to them with? Um, the answers to these questions are likely all a little bit different. And that's exactly why this experiential stage and creating an experience is so important for learners and engaged learning. So we'll break this into three parts again, uh, active engagement, repetition, and takeaway. So as we get into active engagement, you want to think of this as an application and an applied experience portion of your uh, content for your learners. So you want to um, pair this with a framing stage where you'll kind of introduce some content and see what base knowledge of uh, this information that your learners has and you'll pair it with this framing into this application piece so that they can kind of dive deeper into and really start to engage with and, and be active with the content. So the style will change depending on who your learners are and how they best retain information. So this could be something very active where they're paired together. It could be self-reflection. There's a lot of different methods that you can use to create an experience with your content. Uh, you can also use several different things to help with that. So there are in uh, built-in features to a lot of our online teaching platforms. So um, various video uh, platforms, including Zoom, has things like breakouts, um, poll features where you can ask questions and receive feedback. You can use whiteboards and annotation where folks can draw and write on shared screens. And um, there's also chat features so they can give you a little feedback even if they can't verbalize at all times. There's also some supplemental programs. Yeah, in the thanks Jared. In the market of online learning tools, there are a lot of supplemental programs out there to invite interactivity, whether that's things like Kahoot or Nearpod or Trello. Um, whatever you choose, be sure that those choices follow your organization or institution's policy as far as accessibility and data security um, are concerned. Even some of the ones I just listed are not necessarily approved at this institution. Um, so do check with your IT policies and enterprise tool sets to make sure that whatever supplemental programs you use are approved. Great, thanks, Amy. So yeah, again, um, apply and relate back to your frame, framing of content and then make it active and engaged. And you can do that with built-in features or those supplemental programs uh, like gaming and polling and different things. So after you uh, think about that, there will be a repetition period. So as we um, like to think about learning, we wanna make sure that we keep it into kind of chunked sizes that our learners can engage and retain. So we want to really think about chunking that content into smaller segments so that you're not laying on too much all at once. And really 10 to 15 minute segments is kind of the, the gold standard to shoot for in this area so that you can make sure your learners both get the right level of depth and still are able to retain that knowledge. So you can add some new information and break them into an experience where they can dive further, again, 10 to 15 minutes, and then you'll wanna switch gears again, whether that's a break altogether from content or jumping into a new style of learning. Um, this can also vary, again, by your content. So depending on what it is, it may be something where you can have them really engage and work with it. If it's maybe learning how to use um, the power tools or learning how to do a certain gardening technique, you could really get them engaged. Whereas if it's something more along the lines of teaching, they may have to do some teachbacks and engaging with other members in a group. So a lot of different ways that you can do this, but most important, chunk that so that they can retain that 
And that 10 to 15 minute segment is really key there. So after you can do that, you wanna make sure to apply it to um, some takeaways that Amy will take us through. Thanks, Jared. So after your experience, it's also important to bring the group back together for a formal takeaway discussion of sorts. You want to have a deliberate strategy before you send your learners off into the world with this new information and this experience that you've provided to them. So you may reference back the new content and how that applies to the experience that they just completed. And you may also include something like a call to action or goal writing. Um, statistically, people are more likely to actually do something if they write it down. Um, you may even consider incorporating something more structured into your content or um, course if, if it's appropriate to revisit this content in, at a future defined time to check in with them. So this is a good strategy for larger um, concepts that might apply to big projects or um, ongoing work. So you can have them write goals and check in with them later to see how they're coming along with those goals. Um, in essence, though, this organized takeaway discussion helps wrap up the learning session and ensure that everyone leaves with a good working knowledge of the new information they've gained and, and how they're supposed to use it. So with this segment, we have covered the three components of creating an experience, active engagement, repetition, and takeaway. All right, thanks, Amy. So that's how we can create that experience. And we really wanna thank our colleague, Danae Wolf, who put together this template for our slides. And we also have our email addresses for Amy and myself in case you need to reach out or have any further questions. So thank you and happy teaching.